May well be in some people's view that the Secret Service has become too much of an empire. Some people believe it, uh, uh, it impedes the democratic relationship between elected representatives and the people. And it is indeed often heavy-handed. But this is a day to which Governor Clinton will surely pay deference. Anyone who ever complains to them the Secret Service gets the answer well. One president has been killed and others have been shot. And there's no arguing with that. Now, as Governor Clinton arrives at this north door of the White House, this is the main door, this is where everybody comes in, there's the first glimpse we have of President Bush um, in a couple of days. And Mrs. Bush, uh, his last days in the White House have been very private. And in a, in a very moving article by Johnny Apple in the New York Times this morning, who talked to a lot of the participants who'd been at dinner, something of a last supper last night. The president saying hello to Chelsea, whose home it will become. Let's listen for a second. The dog, which is about to be replaced by the cat. At any rate, in, in his article in the New York Times this morning, Johnny Apple writes, quoting Tom Ashley, one of the five people who had dinner with the president last night, um, that there was no whimpering and no finger pointing and we laughed quite a bit but when we said goodbye it was choke time for all of us no one is crazy enough to think you can turn your back on a half presidency having been rejected by the voters and go back to houston texas with a happy heart the president will leave the east side of the capitol and fly back to Houston, going first by helicopter to Andrews Air Force Base and then on Air Force One, having having put off all of the press except for Hugh Sidey, the longtime White House chronicler for Time magazine. But it was, that's Ron Brown, who's the Secretary of Commerce designate, and having a little bit of difficulty with his nomination hearings up on Capitol Hill, the former chairman of the Democratic National the Dem Democratic Party most hardened political people do feel that they're part of a rather remarkably successful experiment in democracy. I suppose at 1 o'clock or 1.30 the boxing gloves come back on again. But you have this feeling, here's Mandela in jail for 27 years of a life sentence in South Africa, now free, watching a democratic process. Here are two of the most bitter ideological foes in the House looking like long-lost friends. And even hardened journalists, Peter, can sometimes find it in their hearts for a couple of hours to feel as good as we're allowed to be constitutionally. Let us stay on this picture for just a moment. Mrs. Quayle, there in the red coat. I'm not quite sure, David, what Vice President Dan Quayle is going to do now. I think he's going to go to a think tank, isn't he? Well, he's going to Indiana, where his family owns two newspapers, one in Indiana and one in Arizona. And he says he's thinking about running for president next time. That requires a great deal of thought, I would think. Hillary on the right. In a recent poll, uh, Vice President Quayle does not do as well as he would like to be doing at this point, though he is regarded as having had an excellent campaign, and he will escort the Vice President-elect. Um, they were friends in the Senate. They were bitterly antagonistic to one another on the campaign trail. As I said, let's stay with the picture, but in terms of this transition of power, let's listen for a moment, because we haven't yet today, to ABC's Cokie Roberts, who's up on Capitol Hill. Cokie, you can see the... the Mrs. Bush and Mrs. Clinton coming out. How's the transition going up there this morning? Well, uh, we've, we've heard that the Secretary of Defense will be extended to 4 o'clock this afternoon, by which time the Senate should have confirmed the new Secretary of Defense. I think it really gives a sense uh, to the new president, however, how dependent he is on the institution of Congress to get anything done, that he needs uh, their approval for his cabinet, he needs their approval for his program. And there's no place that makes that clearer than this trip to the Capitol today. This is, after all, this building, the celebration of the first branch of government, the, the Congress. And uh, the president only comes here at the sufferance of Congress. He tends to come here to get sworn in, and after he dies, to be laid in state. And other than that, a few states of the Union, and that's it. Thank you, Koki. We'll be back to you uh, a lot uh, during the lunch and during the visit to the Capitol, which is just about to begin in the presidential Cadillac. Now, that may not seem significant to all of you, but President Bush always used a Lincoln. And Governor Clinton has decided to use 
this Cadillac limousine, and surely there will be more than one. You could not find a convertible in this town. There was a lot of talk before this as to whether or not Governor Clinton, we still don't know whether he'll walk or whether he'll ride or whether he'll get out of the car. Uh, we suspect perhaps it'll be the latter. But uh, we do know that he has, nice gesture from President Bush, we do know that he will use a presidential Cadillac in celebration, naturally, of American motor technology. I've only seen Cadillacs, Lincolns, and Buicks. No Japanese cars. As this limousine leaves the north gate of the White House and comes out onto Pencil Avenue, the most astonishing flurry of activity begins in the White House itself. You can see the license plate, the new license plate with number one on it. Astonishing flurry of activity in the White House because this now ceases to become the Bush's family home. This ceases to be President Bush's office. And by the time the Clintons return to the White House this afternoon to watch the parade, to use the bathrooms for the first time as President, as Governor Clinton was alluding yesterday to all the small bathrooms in the White House, it will be their home for the next four years, and their belongings will be put in place. We'll try as the day goes on to give you some hint of the most unchecked bureaucracy in town, which is the Secret Service, as you mentioned earlier, or as you said some people think earlier, and I certainly am among those. And if he wants to go out and, and uh, resume a kind of mildly free circulation right. through the community, well, that will have a, a, a change nice on the way see. people well, behave. And Sam, your views on this? Well, the town will change to the extent that it'll be different people doing the same things. I mean, for 12 years it was the Republicans who got to ride around in limousines and be recognized by the head waiters. Oh, yes, please, take this table right here up front. And, and now it's going to be the Democrats. One of the saddest stories, Peter, I ever heard was after the 1976 election. The next day after uh, President Ford had lost, his Secretary of the Interior, Roger C.B. Morton, came to Duke Zebert's for lunch. And one of our producers at ABC News went over there. And Duke said to him, David Newman was his name, here, David, I have a table for you. And David said, but Duke, there's the Secretary of Interior waiting. And Duke said, yesterday's news, David, yesterday's news. <laughs> well, there you see a very clear symbolic photograph of today's news as they come in through the uh, law library entrance at the east side of the Capitol. President Bush goes one direction, and Governor Clinton goes another direction. They both go to holding rooms. Jackie Judd, watch the, this is the official party, of course. Mrs. Gore, Mrs. Quayle, um, and, and, and various aides and members of the family. And I apologize, we simply do not recognize them all as yet. But as they, as they go down and they go from the east side of the Capitol over to the west terrace here, which we said has only been used since Ronald Reagan and, and George Bush. Jim Wooten, uh, Jim, tell us what is actually going on down at the White House at the moment. Well, Peter, what they've done is to uh, change the chairs, actually, in the uh, reviewing stand. That's about the only thing that's going on here. We can't tell you what's going on inside the White House, other than we assume that a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of mementos are being moved in for Clinton, since all of uh, President Bush's have already been moved out. I was, uh, I was quite curious about what actually goes on between a president-elect and the retiring president. Uh, and I was doing a little bit of reading. When, when uh, Eisenhower welcomed Kennedy, whom, by the way, he admired and in whom he was very interested, he took him into the Oval Office and showed him around and sat him down behind the desk. This was in the period before the inauguration and showed him some buttons on the underside of the desk. And uh, Kennedy said, well, what's this one, Mr. President? And he said, I'll show you. So he pushed the button, and five minutes later, a helicopter landed on mm. the South Lawn, <laughs> ready to take him anywhere he wanted to go. I don't know if you can see a monitor there, but there was the most delightful look on Chelsea Clinton's face a moment ago. She looked back to one of the Gore children as she took the arm of her naval aviator escort there as if to say, hmm, this ain't half bad. <laughs> the Clintons have gone out of their way um, to try to give this child, who's never lived, I think, anywhere, David, except in the governor's mansion in Little Rock, a normal life. She is in my own experience, which is astonishingly limited, a, a, a charming, normal child. Caused some controversy here in Washington when they chose to send her to a private school rather than a public school. 
Well, I would guess that half of the people on that platform, at least those young enough to have children, have sent them to private schools. So there's a good deal of hypocrisy here going on. Well, some of the criticism of Governor Clinton, President, soon to be President Clinton, has been because of his, ooh, let's listen. Heraldic trumpets. Ladies and gentlemen, Marilyn Quayle, accompanied by Tipper Gore. Music is an essential part of this celebration. As we said, virtually all of it has been provided by the United States Marine Band, uh, called the President's Own ever since Thomas Jefferson. It is the oldest musical organization in the U.S. It plays any kind of music you want, from rock and roll to jazz to classical to pop to whatever. They're very, very good. I was just trying to figure out whether or not those trumpeters were also Marines or not, and I couldn't. There is the inaugural outfit of Mrs. Clinton's that we referred to a little earlier, <coughs> done by a designer in Little Rock, um, who, if history is a guide, has become vastly more famous than she was before by providing clothes to the about-to-be First Lady. It is fair to say that Mrs. Clinton does not appear to have a passion for clothes um, or a passion for design or a passion even to be fashionable. Um, it is often pointed out that she bought her wedding dress at a department store in Fayetteville, Arkansas on the night before her wedding and that is seen to have pretty much uh, illustrated her thinking about the importance of clothes ever since. I'm sure that will change. It is Mrs. Clinton carrying the Bible when Governor Clinton puts his hand Ladies on the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, Barbara Bush accompanied by Hillary Rodham Clinton. And gets sworn in the copy of the book will be held by his wife. It's a long way from Little Rock. But the moving truck has arrived, David, even though it is a long way from Little Rock. The moving <coughs> truck, which left Little Rock a couple of days ago, has now arrived at the White House. And as the Bushes and the Clintons have gone up, it has arrived to unload the Clintons' goods. Back on the West Terrace, the Vice President. Grinning, exchanging grins with uh, <coughs> Senator Mitchell and Congressman Gephardt. Gephardt to the left, Senator Mitchell. The doorkeeper of the house, David. Chosen partner for his loan power. The, uh, there's, there's the moving van. I don't mean to make light of this great moment on the west side of the Capitol. They can't get the moving van through the White House gate. But we can promise you they will in the next several hours. <laughs> it's a big black iron gate. I don't think that...